Hi there, welcome back to the Cosmic Classroom. Today we're going to talk about fusion, fission, and why is it that stars cannot fuse any element heavier than iron. So let's start by discuss discussing these two processes. To fuse something is to bring two things together and create something that has more mass. As if you were to take two pieces of a Lego, combine it together and create one that it's bigger. Fission is the opposite process, is the opposite, the process of breaking those things apart, of getting one big thing and breaking into more than, than one element. So for example, one fusion reaction that happens in the interior of stars is that three atoms of helium combine to form one atom of carbon. So it forms one atom of carbon. And what's nice and what helps the star is the fact that it releases energy in this process. Right? At the end, you have the same number of protons and the same number of neutrons that you started with, but somehow some, release, some energy was released. So you probably heard that, oh yes, when you go from three atoms of helium to one atom of carbon, you lose some mass and energy is generated um, um, using with the process that it's explained by Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared. But let's think about this with a little bit more depth um, in, in here. I'll get to it in a minute, but now I see, okay, so this is fusion, this is fission, would be exactly the reverse, right? It's to break this carbon. Notice that to break an atom of carbon you need to add energy to it, right? So can you do that? Yes, you can, but you need to have energy available to give to carbon to be able to fuse it into uh, three atoms of helium. So let's think about the structure of, the, of an atom again. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty simple to think about the nucleus of an atom. You have two particles, uh, proton and neutron, and the, num the number of protons defines the element. And usually you have the same number of neutrons and protons. So if we look at this next slide, an atom of hydrogen has um, one proton, an atom of uh, helium has two protons and two neutrons, an atom of carbon has six uh, of each one, and an atom of iron has 26 protons and 26 neutrons. Now, um, if you were to try to move, if you were to measure the mass of each one of those atoms, obviously the mass of an atom of carbon would be greater than the mass of an atom of helium. You can see that carbon is much bigger, has more particles, it would be more massive. But the funny thing is that if you weigh this atom of carbon and you weigh the atom of helium, the atom of carbon is less than three times heavier than those three atoms of helium that it came from. You have the same number of particles, right? You had, you had three times four particles in helium, and now you have uh, one times six particles in carbon, 12 and 12. So why are we losing mass? Why is it that we weigh carbon and it weighs less then three atoms of helium in the other side. To answer that question, you need to start thinking about what is mass. Mass, in our everyday life, we just think it's the amount of stuff. But what mass really is, in its more, more basic uh, nature, is how hard it is to make something move. So something that has a, a lot of mass, it's harder to move than something that has very little mass. So what I'm saying is, it's easier to move one atom of carbon than it is to move three atoms of helium. Right? So if you were to weigh, to measure the mass of each one of those atoms, you would find that the atomic mass of the hydrogen is 1.0079, some units. We don't need to go there now, but some units of mass. Helium-2 has 4.0026 and so forth. You can see there. Now let's divide this atomic mass by the number 
of nuclei in each one of those atoms and compute the mass of each nucleus, the mass of each proton in there. If we do that, we'll notice that the mass of uh, the proton that belongs to a hydrogen is greater than the mass of a proton that belongs to helium, which is greater than the mass of a proton that belongs to carbon, which is greater than the mass of a proton that belongs to iron. Right? So one, what I'm saying is that 1.0078 is greater than this number, which is greater than this, which is greater than that. They have the same number of particles, but one way to think about this is that the, maybe the protons that belong to an atom of hydrogen are kind of chubby. You know, they're pretty big. Uh, and as you add more and more particles, the atoms get thinner and thinner and thinner until an atom of iron. Iron, is this, iron has particles that are as small as they can get, that has the smallest mass of all of the other elements. It's easier to push one proton of iron than it is to push one proton in an atom of hydrogen, right? And it's this difference in mass that results in the energy that we see released by the star or by um, whatever elements that's, that's being um, fused together. So notice that no atom, and I didn't show them all to you here, you're going to need to trust me, that no atom in the whole periodic table has less mass per nucleus than iron. The other thing there is, that's why for you to make any other element, you need to give it some energy, give it some food for it to fatten up and be able to participate in another kind of element. Yeah? So, you can do fu fusion with iron, and it is done when there is a supernova explosion, there is energy around, but it takes energy. It takes feeding this atom and making it, it takes feeding this particle and making them all a little bit fatter. All right. So it doesn't help a star. So it doesn't create energy. So it's not good for the star, and that's why it doesn't happen in the interior of the star. Because if it did, it would just make the star die even faster. It would take energy from the star to make something heavier. Now, if you try to do this at home, be aware of one thing. It took me an hour this morning to figure this out. If you look at the periodic table, yeah, and you'll see that most of them will say atomic mass. And the atomic mass that they have listed, it's not really an atomic mass, it's an atomic weight, which is the average of the masses of all of the isotopes out there, right? Isotopes with more or with less protons. What you need to know is the atomic mass of each isotope that's being created. So you need to make sure that the atomic table you, that the periodic table you're looking at has atomic mass, not atomic weight. The way to figure it out, to know if you look at the right table, look at carbon. Carbon has an atomic mass of 12 because that's how it was defined. The mass of one proton is the mass of the nucleus of carbon divided by 12. That's a definition. So look at the table. If it's one, you're looking at the right thing. If not, you're not. So I hope you understand now that the reason why we cannot fuse high iron is because we need to give energy to iron in huge amounts to, to, to make them, them each of their nucleus bigger. All right? So, uh, you can get released by fusing elements that are lighter than iron and building blocks that are bigger. Or you can start from elements that are much heavier than iron, split them with fission, and that will also release energy. It's okay to do the reverse, but you need to give energy to the process instead of getting, process, getting energy out. I hope it helps your understanding of fission, fusion, and what's so special about iron.